Good evening, students, parents, and family members. I'd like to welcome you to the 2021 Niskayuna Middle School's 8th grade Moving Up Ceremony. We'd like to begin tonight's program by recognizing the challenge the past year has posed for our students. In addition to the typical academic program, we've required an array of limitations to many of the things that make middle school fun and engaging for you. We recognize the incredible effort and hard work that went on through the course of this year with every student in this class. While sometimes that effort showed up in the form of nightly reading or homework or a great score on a test or quiz, it also sometimes appeared in the form of a student who was struggling with asynchronous learning, reaching out to a teacher for help or for guidance. That exceptional effort cannot be overshadowed. Mr. Ricosi and I would like to commend you for your hard work your adaptability, and grit in the face of significant challenges. Sarah Lewis, a Harvard professor and author of The Rise, considers grit a key factor in future success. As she says, grit is not just a simple elbow grease term for rugged persistence, it's an often invisible display of endurance that lets you stay in, a, in an uncomfortable place and work hard to improve upon a given interest and do it again and again. We couldn't have asked for any more from this group of students in that regard. We're happy to be able to do something fun for you tonight. We'd also like to thank and commend our Iroquois NVA staff for their work, grit, and persistence. We don't have enough time this evening to appropriately thank them for the work they've done this year. In addition to their typical work, in the service of children and for the significant influence they've had in the social, emotional, and academic growth of, of our students. They've also been focused on the health and safety of students and their own health and safety. They have worked to continually learn and implement the best methods they can for teaching and learning both in person and remotely. It is our privilege to be part of such a dedicated group. Please join us in thanking them for the difference they have made this year and will continue to make in the lives of Niskan Unit children with a big round of noise. We are here tonight to celebrate a new milestone in your child's educational journey. Think back to your fifth grade parent orientation night when many of you were more nervous about the transition to middle school than your children. Do you remember? But then there were those first few days of sixth grade. They came home and told you how easy it was to get around the building and finding their classes was a breeze. Isn't it crazy to think how quickly the time has flown? Students, I'd like you to take a moment and ask you to turn and thank your family for all their support, guidance, and love. Now, I'd like to thank all the parents and families for your collaboration with our middle school staff these last three years. Making the most of middle school is truly a community effort, and we, as a staff, appreciate your support. Would everyone please take a moment to give the parents a huge round of applause. The group of students we're honoring this evening is a wonderfully talented, compassionate, fun-loving group of kids. It doesn't seem like that long ago that they entered middle school as significantly different children. They were physically smaller and not nearly so self-assured. Over the past three years, they've studied and practiced and performed. Through good times and not so good times as middle school is apt to be, they've changed and grown and learned so much. And now we're ready to send them off to the high school. While we still have the chance, we'd like to offer them some last words of advice. The book, What I Wish I Knew When I Was 20, by Dr. Tina Selig, offers some insight that we think is valuable to our eighth grade graders moving up. Dr. Selig's advice is great for people of all ages. Her recommendations are extremely valuable to the young people about to take that next step into high school. Number one, the first thing Dr. Selig says is challenge assumptions. I interpret that in this way. As you run across things that seems like problems, be inventive. Don't rely on the resources you think you have at your disposal. Start from scratch. You may find that the solutions you can come up with by starting with nothing may exceed your expectations. Number two, 
Look at the world with fresh eyes. View problems as opportunities. The more we take on problems, the more confident and proficient we become at solving them, and better able to see them as a springboard to being innovative and creative thinkers. Number three, fail. It's inevitable that we will all fail at something sometime. But if you're afraid to fail, you'll never take chances. Look at any perceived failure as an opportunity to learn. Number four, plot your own course. We all receive explicit and implicit messages about the roles we're expected to play in life. From the earliest stage, you've been asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I think plot your own course means to separate not what, what you want for yourself from what others want for you and to follow your heart. Number five, test the limits of your abilities. There's no such thing as luck. You make your own luck by working incredibly hard, harder than you ever thought that you could. You will have that opportunity in high school and then as you pursue your career or college. Dr. Seelig sums it up like this, quote, it's incredibly easy to get locked into traditional ways of thinking and to block out possible alternatives. For most of us, there are crowds of people standing on the sidelines, encouraging us to stay on the prescribed path, to color inside the lines, and to follow the same directions they followed." End quote. Students, we hope somewhere, sometime along your path, one of these pieces of advice resonates with you. Maybe you'll decide consciously or subconsciously to color outside of the lines. We wish you the best of luck next year and beyond. We would now like to take some time to individually acknowledge each of the members of the Iroquois and Van Antwerp Class of 2021. I'd like to thank all of the faculty and staff at both schools that donated their time and energy to putting this presentation together. Out of respect for all of the members of the class, we ask students not to cheer, yell, or whistle for individuals, and we'd ask that you do the same. Please hold your cheers and applause until the end when we'll recognize all students as a group. Hi, my name is Regan Anderson speaker for Team Onondaga. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate our class, the eighth grade class of 2021. We made it. Through all the chaos that's been our middle school experience, here we are at the end of it. Before anything else, I'd like to thank our team teachers. Every student on the team has been able to see how hard they've been working to make this year as ordinary as possible, the best the circumstances could have allowed for, and they've succeeded. Mr. Frank, unfortunately teaching from home, but whose enthusiasm was felt through the screen. Mrs. Judd, pulling off the virtual experiments that we had to miss. Mrs. Walter, somehow tolerant of our antics. And Mr. Adamo, strolling through the hallways, blasting music and taking us on walks. We're so sincerely grateful for everything that you guys have done for us this year. Additionally, thank you to all of our sixth grade teachers who saw us as our wide-eyed and terrified selves and helped us through that initial nervousness to success. To our seventh grade teachers who were forced to accommodate a pandemic with no plan and still handled that transition with grace. To our language teachers and not to Google Translate who are able to teach a group of brand new speakers. To our specials teachers, music, art, PE, and more who dealt with us in multiple middle school years. To all of the Iroquois staff, you were terrific and we couldn't have done it without your support. I'd also, of course, like to thank all the parents for driving us everywhere and for tolerating us, a bunch of awkward, angsty teenagers in the middle of a pandemic. I have to give you props for that. I can't imagine it could have been easy. All of us students came into middle school with expectations. Realistic or not, I don't think any of us could have anticipated what we had experienced instead. We started out as a bunch of anxious 11-year-olds getting lost in the hallways and struggling to open our lockers. And when we thought we had it all figured out, our way of school and of life was upended. 
taken out of school entirely, then sent into the same classroom all year with four or five other students. Of course, this year it came down to the little things, the silver linings, pranking our teachers as they walked in or the other half of our class, even when we never saw them, playing melon ball in the tennis courts. We were able to form bonds with people that we might have never spoken to otherwise. Even through the madness, we were able to find the bright spots and the sanity. We've adapted to circumstances that we never could have imagined. This was no normal year, to be sure, and even the simplest of things had to change because of COVID. So take a moment to appreciate how much you've been able to accomplish through that. From remembering if you're supposed to be in person that day, to never seeing your friends, to mastering how to learn virtually. If nothing else, here you are at graduation. In the past three years, we've been forced to struggle with questions of identity, of who we are and who we wanna be, of what we wanna do. And we've done it in standard school, from behind a computer or both. We've matured, well, some of us have. This chapter may be coming to a close, but that journey won't end here. We have four more years together, and we don't know what they have in store for us. Four more years of finding our friends, our interests, ourselves, of discovering what we care about and who we'd like to become. Next year, we'll be back to where we've been before, getting lost, meeting innumerable new people, and doing our best in the brand new environment that we'll be placed into. However, we've made it this far, we've endured middle school, we've endured a pandemic, and we've made the best of it. If that doesn't prove we can take what life throws at us, I don't know what does. We've shown that we're ready for high school. So celebrate today, keep telling yourself that you'll do that homework and summer reading tomorrow, and enjoy yourselves. We deserve it. For those who don't know me, my name is Sarah, and I was asked to give a speech. To me, middle school was a jumping off point. People reminded me throughout my three years of middle school that my grades aren't the most important thing and that they don't really count. While they are right that my grades from middle school don't go on my college application per se, they do matter and here's why. Middle school, as I said, is a jumping off point because it is where you learn how to study properly, how to write an essay properly, and how to be in a situation with others when it might not suit you. While the grades might not matter as much, the lessons you learn here do. I remember my sixth grade first day pretty vividly. I had just moved to Niskayuna from California. I was scared to be in a new school with new people, and I was petrified of riding the bus. I also remember how excited I was to see what middle school was all about and what it was going to be like. Now I realized that I had nothing to be scared of, and it was on that first day of sixth grade that I met my best friend on that bus ride that I was so scared to go about, go on. Some of the experiences that stood out to me about sixth grade were the different subjects that we got to learn about. In social studies, we all learned about ancient civilizations, world religions, and different ancient empires throughout the world. In science, the year was exclusive to earth science and learning about a bunch of different rocks, particles, and layers of the earth. We even got to go on a field trip to Thatcher Park to see the different rocks there and the famous U-shaped valley. School dances were also introduced and they were a bit awkward and weird at first, but they were fun in the end. When you think about it, sixth grade compiled so many different elements, there are too many to remember. Seventh grade was all of our second year of middle school and so many things were different. We were learning different things, we got treated differently, and school got a bit more difficult. Instead of learning about earth science, we learned about biology, the human body, and cells. I remember my science class um, got to look at single cell uh, organisms under the microscope, which was really fun. We also started to learn about early American history, which included the land bridge, the civil war, and things like prohibition. Then we ended the year off with women's suffrage. One big event that probably everyone remembers about our seventh grade year was that it got cut short by a deadly pandemic that broke out across the world. Seventh grade was definitely supposed to be a different experience for all of us. It started out normal in the beginning, but as COVID spread into our community, it was all anyone could talk about. I remember that all 
my homeroom could talk about in the month of March was COVID and whether or not we would be out of school. Then came the last day of seventh grade in person. The last day of in-person seventh grade, sorry. It was March 13th and everyone knows now that we would not be coming back on Monday. As the days and weeks stretched on, I grew more anxious to see if we would return at all for the year. I don't know if I was the only one, but I would check the Niskirna website pretty much every day, just seeing if we would go back. Who would have thought that a seventh grader wanted to go back to school? Um, the Niskayuna website would be updated and they kept pushing the date of return until they finally said the rest of the school year will be virtual. I had been personally hoping that COVID would just go away and we could all go back to school, but instead the pandemic got so much worse. Seventh grade ended with the closing of a computer, which was completely different than any other school year. There was also a lot of uncertainty about our eighth grade year and what it would look like because of COVID. The hybrid system was new to a lot of people, including me. But as the weeks went on, it got a bit easier. Hybrid learning came with its own challenges though. For one thing, it was, for me, uh, it was hard to focus sometimes when I was at home on school because I was in my own space with my own things. We also had to do all of our assignments online, which was a very, very big obstacle sometimes. We had totally different teachers, learned about totally different things like the second half of American history, physical science and chemistry, how to write a paper with correct citations, and we got to experience both in-person and at-home learning. Tests were another thing that, were, that was very different this year. For one thing, the majority of us didn't have to take any finals, which was a huge relief. We also did all the tests online, which was a challenge for both the teachers and the students. I remember one science test I had taken at home. I had answered all of the questions with three minutes to spare, and I went back to check my answers, as the teachers always tell us to do. But I accidentally reloaded the Google form and it deleted all of my answers. I don't think I have ever freaked out that much in a five minute period ever. All I can say is what a year. Even though the, this year was different, it was the small moments that made it special. We got to be more independent with our work and sometimes we even got to choose what work we did. We got to watch each other grow up throughout middle school, even though we were more separated than usual this year. Middle school seemed to fly by, and it seems like only yesterday we were little sixth graders trying to learn how to open our lockers. When you think about it, even though this wasn't what any of us thought our middle school days were going to end like, we all made it through. When I reflect on middle school as a whole, I like to think of a roller coaster. Sometimes days would be so great and everything would just go the way I wanted it to go. But other days, the days were rotten and everything about it would just be unpleasant. <laughs> just like a roller coaster, days may have been great or not so great. So many things happened in middle school for all of us. And in the high school, we will have more freedom over our classes, which will make school a lot more interesting. We will also be able to get our licenses when we are old enough. And in a few years, we're gonna graduate. <laughs> high school is like uncharted territory and it is daunting, but it is a new experience that we will all be going through together. Thanks for listening. Good evening, Mrs. Wild. Mr. Koval, teachers, parents, and my fellow Team Tuscarora students. Tonight we gather to celebrate all of the hard work, fun times, and memories we have made over the past three years. To say that the past few years have been a roller coaster ride would be an extreme understatement. We have had to deal with a global pandemic online school, being surrounded by your family for months at a time with no break, and some people even try to eat Tide Pods. I'm not exactly sure how that one became a thing. Looking back to 2018, when we were just coming into sixth grade, it is crazy to think about how much we have grown and matured. Despite
despite all of the challenges and setbacks that were thrown our way, we persevered. I am so proud to be a part of such a strong, hardworking, and intelligent group of young people. I'm sure we can all agree that this year will be one that we will never forget. From Mr. Jessup's great jokes to Mrs. Lee's crazy science demos and Mr. Rizzi's crazy math equations, some of which felt impossible. And how can we forget Ms. Stanziano taking us around the world, teaching us all different cultures and languages? I would like to give a huge thank you to Mr. Jessup, Mr. Rizzi, Mr. Dickerson, Ms. Lee, Ms. Stanziano, Madam Mako, and all of our special teachers. Thank you also to Mrs. Wild and Mr. Koval and our special education teachers, Mrs. Carroll and Ms. Reitinger. Thank you to our guidance counselor, Mrs. Carroll, for helping us through these extremely difficult and unpredictable times. Last but not least, a huge shout out to our amazing parents and all they have done to help us prepare for high school and beyond. This year has taught many, many valuable life lessons. Some of which are how to have a mask on your face for five hours at a time, how to work a Chromebook like we've gone to college for it, and as Mr. Jessup always said, to answer the damn question. In all seriousness, this year truly taught us the importance of perseverance, cooperation, and teamwork. I want to reiterate how extremely proud I am of each and every one of my fellow classmates on how hard we have worked this year. Iroquois has been our second home for the past three years of our lives, and it's going to be very difficult to say goodbye. But as one door closes, another one opens, and I cannot wait to see what the future brings for this group. Iroquois, it's been real. Hello, uh, my name is James Pravat, and here's a little bit of me about my time as a middle schooler. So, middle school has been like a roller coaster. I faced some ups and downs uh, during uh, my time doing it. So, on the first day of middle school, it was kind of like I entered a parallel universe. Um, I had uh, to move to a whole new building, I had to uh, live with a mix of kids from different elementary schools, and this was a change we all had to adjust to. We had to make sure that we were class on, on time, finding the right classrooms, and trying to work out the combinations to our lockers. It was interesting making the transitions from cubbies in fifth grade to lockers in sixth grade, and this was our own personal storage area to keep our school supplies. Uh, but the hardest part was uh, trying to learn how to open the lock, especially while in a rush. I remember I'd actually leave my locker just slightly open, just so I could avoid opening it four times a day. And how, how could I forget the, the social part? When getting into sixth grade, most of us had classes without the same good friends we vibed with in fifth grade. It was rough not seeing them as much as I hoped, but it granted the opportunity to make new ones. But above all that, the, the toughest part I faced was lunch. Although, not being there since March of 2020, it was an interesting experience. Our table only limited to the amount eight kids per tables, and s sitting with your close friends wasn't exactly all that easy. Every day was a struggle just to find the seat and feel comfortable there. Once meeting new people though, it wasn't hard after all. Joining chorus and playing on a small basketball group also helped. But the number one biggest issue I faced as a middle schooler was confidence, especially when it came to tests that didn't show my true ability. There would always be that student who's flaunting that A-plus grade they got and making the A-minus feel like trash. We all have our bad days, and sometimes things just don't go the way we want to, and we just have a bad outcome. I mean, like, come on. And no one can deny this. We've all faced this, but other people just have better ways of hiding it than others. I know that it wasn't my confidence that was a concern as much as some students pretending to be better than they really were. Seventh grade was also an interesting year. It was the year I started student council 
and the beginning of quarantine happened in March 2021. Uh, coming to unpopular opinion, I actually had really enjoyed the beginning of it. Um, with everything going on with schoolwork, tests, and extracurriculars, I was just praying for it all just to go away. Thus, being blessed with quarantine. I got to learn about myself, build new skills, stay close to God, and spend time with family. But it wasn't this great for everyone. Eighth grade was the year I started to learn the truth. It was the year I gained the maturity to learn what was really going on in the world. Especially with that in addition to social studies. The things I learned really opened my eyes to what a blessed life I'd been living and why my parents were so self-conscious about me leaving the house alone. It was tough learning from hybrid and only seeing a certain handful of people every other day, but um, I always got to adjust to it. A, a being home did present some challenges, especially loading documents and having the tabs we load every time I switched, and a, a generally trying to a speed up the internet just to uh, work on some things like a who and documents and things like that. But all in all, I, th I think that middle school is a very interesting last three years, not just for me, but for all of us. Some things were great, like meeting new people I never thought I, I would be friends with and getting involved with acting and track. I mean, who would have thought I would have been on two sets during quarantine? Um, I I'm thankful for all the challenges I faced and that uh, many other people also did too, because it I was essential in order to develop as a stronger y young adult as I travel into my high school years. I cannot wait until of the future to see what God has in store for me. So, uh, a, f a farewell van van at middle school. See you soon. Oh,
Congratulations, you are now the Miss Unit class of 2025.